will stand if you're able and let's sing 10,000 Reasons. Please sign in. 
Bible study is taking a break for the summer and will resume in September. If you want any details about Bible study, please talk to Reverend Catherine. The July worship participant list is back there on the welcome table, which is in the back. So sign up for a spot today. Our next congregational meeting and pot lunch, lunch will be on Sunday, July 14th after service. Please let us know what, what you'll bring to share in our meal. The sign-up sheet is on the welcome table. Signing up for a dish helps us, uh, helps everyone know what others are planning. So we all don't bring the same meal. The sign-up sheet is on the welcome table, where the July worship list is. So if you're going to make something, also look and see if there's any spots filled or spots that you want to fill. Loretta Valley Changing the Narrative Project is sponsoring a community meal on July 18th at 6 p.m. at Fishwick Middle School. It used to be um, Jackson Middle School. Share stories of your neighborhood and get to know your neighbors, neighbors over a free catered meal. RSVP is required and is expected to fill up quickly. More information on the event and how to register is available on the welcome table. We're doing the Love Southeast Fest again. The second annual Love Southeast Fest will be Saturday, July 27th from noon free at Belmont Park, also recently Jackson Park. This is a day of free food and fellowship with others in the Southeast community. Be sure to come out and take part in the fun. There's a lot of fun on last year. It was amazing. Please check the news and notes section of the bulletin for details and more on these and more upcoming events. In the early days of Christianity, Christians were often persecuted, so they gathered in secret. Once there, they would greet each other, happy to be together in a safe place. We continue that tradition this moment. The peace of Christ can come in the form of a hug, a handshake, a high five, or a wave across the room. Whatever you choose. If you haven't already done so, this is also a time to write in the book at the welcome table any prayer or request you'd like read aloud. And also, if you want to sign up for potluck or um, and, and July worship, just if you'd like prayers read aloud. The peace of Christ be with you. Also, the love on somebody. All right, we'll go ahead into the call to worship. I will read in the light print, if you'll read with me in the bold. Uh, you can find that on the screen, and it's also in your bulletin. The realm of God has come near. Enter this time of worship with joyous expectation. We will extol you, O God, for you have drawn us up. You rescued us from the pit and restored us to life. Sing praises to God, all faithful ones. Give thanks to God's holy name. We have known your favor, O oh God, in many ways. You have healed us and turned our mourning to dancing. Rejoice in the work you are given to do. Give thanks that your names are known to God. We will praise you, O oh God, and not be silent. We will give thanks to you forever. Alright, let's stand again and sing Lift Your Head Weary Sinner.
Tuesday. Happy birthday, Daddy. Elizabeth, blessings and prayer for my daughter Ariel's new home in Lexington. We also want to keep Bonnie and Patsy in prayer. They are traveling across the country to see family, I think to Nebraska, and that they have a safe journey. They've been sort of checking in on Facebook. Um, praise us that General Conference was a lot better than I was anticipating it was going to be. Yes, and for the people that were less elected, and I encourage you to go on Facebook and find the UFMCC denomination page and go from there to see some of the sermons. Uh, some of you may have to crank up a little bit, but I especially encourage you to catch Troy's sermon, which was on Monday night, and also our new moderator, Reverend Elder Moderator Cecilia Eggleston's sermon on Friday. It was a real blessing to those. I was glad to share a conference with Rhonda Thorne. I introduced her to everybody as she's from us, but she's with New Life now. So they can keep all the chain of ownership there clear. I could talk a lot more about conference, but it's too hot. Other prayer requests that you didn't put in the book? Anyone? Did I see a hand? Yes. Pray for the money fairies and whatever's to come forth with money for our air conditioning. Uh, we're getting a second, um, what do you call it, bid, an estimate, tomorrow, Tuesday. If you know anybody who loves this church but may not come here for some reason, please encourage them to make a tax-deductible offering, and we would appreciate that. Unspoken prayer requests. And just remember, as you sit here and perspire as I am, Think of the ball games you went to. Think of the concerts you went to. Most of those were outside, and it was a lot more than this hour is going to be. Thank you, Jesus. Loving God, we thank you today that we do have a place we can come and worship. We thank you that we have people that care about us, people that know when we're going through rough times. We thank you, God, for all the ways you answer our prayers. We are standing in faith, knowing you're going to give us the money to get this air conditioning fixed. And yesterday would have been soon enough, God. Continue to bless the things that were mentioned in the prayer book that Kelly has another 40 years, that Elizabeth's children continue to be well, and that Laura's family be enveloped in prayer and comfort 
that she's here today, God, because she knew this is where she needed to be. Continue to bless this church. Continue to bless this denomination. And may all that we do bring honor and glory to you. In your name we pray. Amen. Heard I'm turning 40, right? I got the cane to prove it. Uh, you know, it's uh, it's warm in here, but uh, for me, I'm grateful for the fact that you know, even without the air conditioning, even without this building, uh, that we would still be a church. We would still come together to worship God. Uh, you know, the AC, it, it will be fixed, hopefully sooner rather than later, but we'll get it done. I have faith in that, and I have faith that God will provide. So as these plates come around, please give as you're able. Usher's come. Okay, remember when we didn't have screens and we knew what was going on? And guess what? For the scripture, you get to use your ears. And I'm going to look a bit Pentecostal with this cloth before it's over, I'm sure. <laughs> Lord have mercy. Christ has set us free to live a free life, Galatians 5. So take your stand. Never again let anyone put a harness of slavery on you. It's absolutely clear that God has called you to a free life. Just make sure that you don't use this freedom as an excuse to do whatever you want to do and destroy your freedom. Rather, use your freedom to serve one another in love. That's how freedom grows. For everything we know about God's word is summed up in a single sentence. Love others as you love yourself. That's an act of true freedom. If you bite and ravage each other, watch out. In no time at all, you'll be annihilating each other, and where will your precious freedom be then? My counsel is this. Live freely, animated and motivated by God's Spirit. Then you won't feed the compulsions of selfishness. For there is a root of sin self-interest in us that's at odds with our free spirit. Just as the free spirit is incompatible with selfishness. These two ways of life are antithetical, so that you cannot live at times one way and at times another way, according to how you feel on any given day. Why don't you choose to be led by the Spirit and so escape the erratic compulsion 
of a law-dominated existence. It's obvious that this kind of life develops out of trying to get your own way all the time. Repetitive, loveless, cheap sex, a stinking accumulation of mental and emotional and physical garbage, I'll add. Frenzied and joyless graves for happiness, trinket gods, magic show religion, paranoid loneliness, cutthroat competition, all-consuming yet never satisfied wants, a brutal temple and an impotence to love or to be loved. Divided homes and divided lives, small-minded and lopsided pursuits. The vicious habit of depersonalizing everyone into a rival, uncontrolled and uncontrollable addictions, ugly parodies of community, I could go on and on. This isn't the first time I've warned you, you know. If you use your freedom in this way, you will not inherit the dominion of God. Now the scripture I was going to use goes a little longer, but that will make another sermon one day. I love how Paul says that we are free. He just declares it. He doesn't say, if you do this, if you do that. He just says, we're free. And then he says, don't ever let anyone put a harness on you. Now, I'm not going to try to talk to you about horses because I know less about those than I do most other things. But I know times when I felt restricted, times when I didn't feel free, times when I didn't do and couldn't do what I wanted to. And I thought about the kind of things that harness us. Sometimes it's money. And sometimes it's money because we've misused the money we have. I don't know about you, about you, but I generally know how much I'm going to bring in every week or every month. And it's my responsibility to make that go where it needs to go. Now, if you get that spending urge, like some of us have sometimes, and then you go, oh my gosh, what have I done? Some people allow themselves to be harnessed by their spouse. I've told you before, the thing that just sets me on edge is when somebody says, my husband, my wife, my boyfriend, my girlfriend won't let me come to church. Won't let me come to church. Sometimes we're harnessed by fear. The great big what if. What if I actually start giving to the church regularly? Will I have gas in my car? What if I tell somebody that I'm a believer, a Christian? What will they think then? Sometimes we're harnessed by hurt. By hurt. I'm not doing that again. I tried doing that once. They made fun of me. I'm not going to get up there and read in service. I might say the wrong way and I'll feel hurt. But that hurt and strain us. And these are all legitimate. They're all reasons. Paul writing to the Galatians was most worried about them being controlled by the Jewish law. Because the early Christians were sort of schizophrenic, if you will. They wanted this freedom in Jesus, but they were used to keeping all these laws. How many of you grew up in a church that told you you couldn't do X, Y, Z, dance, play cards, drink, whatever, okay? And if you have ever done that, there's probably this little voice that says, uh-oh, uh-oh. <laughs> share a story with you that I tried to share one time and I looked out at the congregation and saw that my mother was there. Couldn't do it. <clears throat> Today's her birthday also. There's a place in L.A. that's called the Pleasure Shop. And it has lots of things in it. <laughs> and when I first moved to California, the persons that were keeping us while we were looking for a place said, let's go to West Hollywood, somewhere I want you to see. So we pull up in front, and just from the logo, I know I'm in trouble. We walked in the door, and I promise you, the first thing that came to my mind is Mrs. Kuhn, my Sunday school teacher as a child, saying, don't ever go anywhere you wouldn't want to be when Jesus comes back. <laughs> and I hesitated just a minute, and I thought, I'm sure Jesus is aware of everything that's in this store. It then became fun for me to take people there and watch them be shown. Paul, though, keeps commanding us to live a free life. Live a free life. And he says there's really only one guideline for that is to serve one another. Love one another. There's no room for selfishness. Now, we're all selfish at times. You know you are. Some folks are going to be watching this later. 
are going to realize that they were selfishly home watching the soccer game. Not calling any names. If anybody gets a score as soon as church is over, let me know. And yes, that's selfish, but if that person is here. These people are often here a lot of times. But selfish sometimes means I'm more important than you are. I'm more important than you are. And we all feel that sometimes. This not being selfish is not the same as not taking care of ourselves. When conference ended, they reminded us the conference staff would not be available for a few days. They were taking some rest. Hallelujah. Selfishness is not saying no, because sometimes we need to say no. Paul goes on and he tells us how to live. And he says, live freely, animated, and motivated by God's Spirit. You say, well, that's nice. It sounds like church. It can be our life every day. We can live our life every day motivated by the Spirit of God. We can live our lives every day animated. When I was in the sixth grade, I had a habit of reading books inside of books. You know, what I was reading was more interesting than what the teacher was teaching. And I was doing that one day, and Mrs. Nunn, I think she figured out I was doing that. And they were doing something about vocabulary, and all of a sudden she goes, Kathy, what does the word animation mean? And I was already not a happy camper, and I looked, I didn't look up. I said, to have life or the appearance of life. And she went, okay. <laughs> I thought about that in regard to a church. There are a lot of churches all over this city, all over this state, all over this country, all over the world, open right this minute. And many of them are cooler than we are. <laughs> How many of those have life? How many of those are encouraging us to live a life? They asked at one service how many people there had churches that had a food ministry. And there were hands go up all over that room. What a blessing. Showing life. Showing life. Paul gives them that long list, and I'm sorry I had to read to you, about all the results of not living a life animated by Jesus. And I'm not going to go through all of them. But I did get hit by one, two of them particularly. One was the accumulation of mental and emotional garbage. And I also added physical stuff. I don't know about your house, but there's a whole lot more junk in my house than I need to have. Although most of it's Joanna. There's a whole lot of stuff there. But how much mental and emotional stuff are we carrying around? Based on what somebody said to you when you were five years old. Based on what someone said to you when you came out to them based on what someone said about how you dress, what car you drive. And the other was that when we live this selfish life, we become impotent to love and be loved. Some of us are sitting in this room right now and you think, I'm not worthy to be loved. I'm not worthy to be loved. Surely God can't love me, nobody else does. And Paul says here that we live that self giving over ourselves to God, that's when we have love and can be loved. There was an old Janis Joplin song, Freedom's Just Another Word for Nothing Left to Lose. I knew some of you would know that. I saw your mouth. You know, to me, freedom is having everything to gain. Paul said for me to live and to die is gain. Freedom is being able to make those choices that we all have. You know, some choices were made at General Conference, and I'll be talking more about that at our congregational meeting. And some choices were not made. Hallelujah. There were a couple of votes that had me extremely concerned. And when they decided to send those back, I wanted to stand and shout. Amen. Yes, ma'am. But this denomination has the potential of a new life, the potential of a new direction, the potential of getting back to what we used to believe. And my prayer is that that is what will come forth. We have the freedom of choice to be here today. And some of you are going to be listening to this this coming week. I know you can't be here because you literally can't stand the heat. And some of you aren't here because there are things we're sweating for do not involve sitting in this church. But I encourage you to remember 
that even if you're not here, the lights are still on, what fans we have are still going, and that monies need to come in. So if you're not here some Sunday, go on the website, ding, donate, mail it to us, 806 Jamison Southeast, or bring it by on Tuesday or Thursday. I'm here on Tuesdays, and Sandra and I both are here on Thursdays. Because it doesn't have to go in that gold plate to be able to be used. Hallelujah. How free are you? How free are you? A lot of talk about freedom this 4th of July. Are you free to let God love you? Are you free to reach out and love someone else? Are you free to trust God even when it's hot as blazes? <laughs> are you free? Because sisters and brothers, if we're not free in God, if we're not free in Jesus, that we're really out of luck. That freedom was bought and paid for a long time ago. It's totally us, totally free to us. Be smart. Accept it. Amen. Amen.